First Corinthians 15. <coughs> We certainly want to thank all of you and welcome you to services here today at uh, Messiah Baptist Church. Certainly an honor to have each and every one of you with us today. Last week, uh, uh, we, last week we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nearly every church, nearly every Christian church took time to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. We want to thank not only you for being here, but those of you who perhaps will tune in later by way of YouTube. We appreciate you uh, tuning in to the YouTube station. You just, if you got a phone, you say YouTube, Messiah Baptist Church, Richland Hills, and it'll come right up just like that. So uh, we hope that you will not only, uh, those of you who are listening and, and tuning in, that you'll also tell your friends. You know, it's our opinion that uh, our YouTube station's worth listening to. Uh, so we're trying to get the Word of God out. I'll tell you what, don't, do you all ever get sick of watching the news? Does it ever, you ever watch it so much and you say, gee, money, Christmas. What in the world is going on? It's just getting sickening. And sometimes I, I, I'm, I'm watching it for a second or two and I have to turn it off. I just turn it off and I, I put on Christian music. I put on a scripture reading on my phone. I can listen to the Bible. I just say, like, for example, today's the 16th. I've already listened to Proverbs 16. I do that. Uh, every day, I listen to the proverb because there's 31 proverbs. So every day, I either read or listen to the proverb for the day, the entire chapter. Uh, and I want to listen to something worth listening to. Uh, that that uh, news is just really uh, gets to me. <clears throat> so uh, if you listen, we appreciate that. And if you tune us in, let others know that there's something worth watching. <clears throat> we all remember the words of the angel that said to Mary, He is not here, he is risen as he said he would. We all remember those words. We all remember what was done on the resurrection. We all remember the fact that the stone was rolled away and Jesus of his own power walked out of the tomb. Even the world celebrates with us on Easter. Now, to the world, it is just another holiday. Good Friday, a day off of work. But to the Christian believer, it is a holy day. When we speak of the resurrection, it is a holy day. Thank God for the resurrection. Amen. The resurrection gives us hope for a glorious and wonderful future. <clears throat> Today, I want to talk about the fact that the resurrection gives us hope for the future. Paul writes in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19, uh, verses 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 and 20. Paul writes these words. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. The idea there is we have no other hope. We have nowhere else to go. <coughs> Verse 20, but now, now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Or to all those who have already uh, died, to those believers who have already died, those ones who believe uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Job 
in the Old Testament made this observation. Job, an Old Testament prophet, made this observation. He said, if I should die and worms should destroy this body, yet I know that someday in my flesh I will see God. Amen. When Jesus rose from the grave, he rose bodily from the grave. He was not a disembodied spirit. He was raised with an immortal, incorruptible, eternal body. During his time before his ascension, which would be 40 days after his resurrection, during that time, he would be seen, he could be touched, he could eat, he could fellowship, he could talk with uh, his followers, he ate bread and fish. After his resurrection, he ate bread and fish with his disciples. On one occasion, he appeared inside of a locked room. The disciples were in there hiding out. They had just witnessed the crucifixion. And no doubt in their minds they were concerned about their own welfare, and so they were hiding in a room. And while they were there, the resurrected Lord was able to go inside that room, whether it's through the wall or through the doors, we don't know. But he was able to appear on the inside of that locked room. <clears throat> he came in there with a new body. He was able to penetrate the walls for no locked doors could keep him out. And do you know the same thing is true today? No locked doors can keep Jesus out. Amen. You could go to the highest mountain. Behold, you'll find he's already there. You can descend to the lowest part of the earth and behold, God is already there. Amen. The idea is you can run, but you can't hide from the all-seeing eye of God. He's watching over you. The disciples recognized him immediately. Thomas had skipped out of church the night, the first time Jesus appeared, the disciples met together. They were hiding out. And Thomas said, what's the use in going? Our leader's dead. There's no need me going to church tonight. It's all over with. But that first night, Jesus showed up in that locked room where all the disciples were except Peter. Uh, <clears throat> he stayed home. But the disciples were so excited about seeing the resurrected Lord that they began telling everybody. I imagine that would be an exciting time, don't you? You saw him crucified, you saw him buried, and now you're seeing him alive? They were excited and they began telling everybody. And I said, they probably started handing out tracts. They probably started planting the, the word of God, the seeds of the word of God. Some, when the disciples started telling them, some believed. And some didn't believe. And some doubted. And Thomas was one of those ones that doubted. But the second time that Jesus appears to, to the disciples, Jesus is with them. And Jesus is aware of what Thomas is thinking. So Jesus will say to Thomas, put your finger in the nail prints. Put your finger in the nail prints. Uh, uh, touch me. Touch me. I'm real. Put your hand in the side where they pierced my side with the sword. Slip your hand in the side, Thomas. 
At that point, Thomas would believe. And Jesus will say to Thomas, Thomas, you believe because you have seen me. But blessed are all those who have never seen and yet believe. Amen. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that liveth and believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The disciples believed so strongly in Jesus after the resurrection that every one of them would be martyred. Now, I know John didn't die, but still they boiled him in oil to kill him, and he survived. But all of them would suffer persecution. Even Thomas... Doubting Thomas would die in India preaching and pastoring a Christian church. Doubting Thomas would be martyred while praying. But he would never doubt again. How has your faith in the resurrection affected your life? How has your faith in the resurrected Lord affected your life? Has it affected the way you live? Does it affect the way you talk? Does it affect every aspect of your life? Somebody said, I believe. But the question is, what do you believe? That's the question. The Apostle Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Everyone who believes. He says, I will save. The gospel which we preach to you. The gospel of Jesus Christ consists of his birth, of his sinless, sinless, perfect life, of his vicarious death. Vicarious meaning he died in our place. He was buried and he was bodily resurrected from the tomb. Amen. We preach all of that, and we believe all of that. And because he lives, we shall also live. Because he lives, we shall also live. For to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Paul wrote these words, Still in 1 Corinthians 15, toward the end of the chapter, I want you to uh, turn with me there, toward the end of the chapter, 15, 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in verse 1, I mean 51, I'm sorry. Paul wrote these words. <clears throat> Behold, I show you a mystery. Boy, it is a mystery, isn't it? I mean, it really, there's mysteries in the Word of God. <laughs> Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. My uncle used to say that about the babies in the nursery. <laughs> Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Jesus, now listen to this, folks. This is a mystery. I'm trying to solve the mystery. Jesus has made a brand new body, immortal, incorruptible, eternal, reserved in heaven for every born again child of God. A body that can be seen, a body that can be touched, a body that can experience love and joy and happiness. Because of the resurrection, we believe thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said to Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. Now, 1949, a few years ago, I was born the first time by the blood of my mother and my father. But in 1967, I was born again by the blood of Jesus. Jesus said, and I quote, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also in that brand new, glorified, eternal, immortal body. The very moment that a Christian dies here on earth, the very moment that a Christian dies here on earth, they ascend upward into the presence of the Lord. They will receive a brand new, glorified, visible, immortal, eternal body, one that shall never perish. And like Jesus, when he ascended upwards before over 500 witnesses saw Jesus, saw him, they saw his body. They knew it was Jesus. He was ascending upward into the clouds. Just like Jesus. One day you're going to be caught up and the laws of gravity can't hold you. Hallelujah to that. Like that little song said, I'm going to heaven, can't wait. Going to see Jesus, can't wait. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And because of the resurrection, <clears throat> we know that when we die, we will go to be with him. We will see him as he is. But not only will we see him, but we will see all of our loved ones who are already there. We will see them. They'll have a body. We will know them. And I think it was uh, Solomon, who, or it was the uh, queen, I think, who said to Solomon, the half has never yet been told or had ever been seen. God has some good plans just for you. There will be a time of rejoicing in heaven. There's rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repents. And I thought, well, what in the world is that all about? Maybe it's our loved ones who were hoping that you would be saved that you would trust Jesus and finally the day come that you put your faith and trust in him and there's rejoicing in the presence of angels because they know that someday you're going to be there and they're going to see you again. Hmm. There's a song about a great reunion day, isn't there? Is there a song about a great reunion day? That's true. If, in fact, you are a believer in Jesus Christ, that is true. 
we will know one another. Scripture said, how will we know each other? We'll know as we are known. That's what the Bible says. We'll know each other. There will be no sorrow. There will be no pain. There will be no tears in the kingdom of heaven. No sickness, no death, no thieves, praise the Lord, can ever enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, whosoever believes in him shall never perish. Did he say that? Jesus said, can you believe what Jesus said? Amen. He said, whoever believes in him will never perish. After the disciples saw the resurrected Lord, their faith was strengthened. And they went everywhere preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember, earlier in the message, we quoted Jesus when we said, uh, blessed are they that have never seen and yet believe. That's you. I haven't seen the resurrected Lord. I haven't seen him. But I believe in him. And I believe in the resurrection. In fact, the matter is, I believe with all my heart in the resurrected Lord. He promises eternal, everlasting life to everyone who believes. Without faith, my dear friend, without faith, faith in the resurrection, it is impossible to please God. And because he lives, you shall also live. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Look away beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do you remember me? Look away beyond the blue. I hope you have a home prepared for you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the resurrection. Lord, we believe in the resurrection. We believe you live. You're alive forevermore. And you made the promise that whoever would believe in you would never perish. God, you have a brand new home. You have a brand new body waiting on every single one of us. We can lay these old bodies down someday and take up a brand new body. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for these promises, the promises of the resurrection. And because you came out of that tomb and because you live, we shall also live again. Now, I ask you, Father, to be with everyone here today in the church, here in our church family and here <clears throat> that they might know you. And they might believe in you. Just believe in you, God. In the privacy of their own heart, may they believe in you. And then, Father, if there are people who are watching us by way of YouTube who are not a Christian, and they want to be, I pray that they would believe in you. Like when Jesus told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. And then he said, Martha, do you believe me? You're asking people today, do you believe in me? So I pray, Father, that everyone under the sound of my voice would put their faith and trust in you alone. May your will be done today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I think we're going to sing number 326, Softly and Tenderly. Is that right, Brother Glenn? Number 326, Softly and Tenderly. We'll sing just a couple of verses, okay? Stand if you would. Softly and Tenderly.